there are some aspects of running form that you're just not going to be able to fix by just thinking about it while you're running. There are exercises that you need to be working on to target certain areas that through strengthening will translate into much better running form. Let me show you. So we're gonna start out thinking about the hip drop that we see all the time. So we see runners, when they're running along, there's a tendency for them to sway their hips from left to right, right to left. That really is indicative of a lack of stability coming from the outside of the hip. Muscles like glute med, particularly glute med to be honest, lives around the outside of the back of the pelvis here and joins in around the top of the thigh bone, the femur, and is responsible for lateral stability around the pelvis. Now, if we are weak through glute med and we're not good at stabilizing the pelvis in this side-to-side -side plane, when we land and load on the one leg, we see this drop off to the other side. Now that can have knock-on consequences in terms of creating more tension through the IT band, creating IT band syndrome on the outside of the knee there. It can put more stress down the inside of the lower leg, and it can even affect your lower back. Now, simple exercise to fix this, really straightforward. We can use a dumbbell and a step. And with this, all I want to do is start out with our knee up, in this kind of running man type position here. In this position, straight away, I want you to think about squeezing your butt on the outside of this standing leg. Little soft knee here. This arm out. So if you're standing on your left foot, right arm out. This creates a long lever between the center of the hip and where the weight is on the opposite side. That long lever is gonna put a lot more demand on glute med. With this long lever position, we're simply gonna go tap back, knee through. Tap back, knee through. You know, touch down with the toe, don't take the weight through the toe at the back. And as you come through this knee through position, the top of the movement, you have to be stabilizing. This weight is forcing you to stabilize more through glute med, that muscle that's letting you down so often when we see that hip drop. We can do a set of 15 on the right, or with the weight in the right hand. And then we do a set of 15, swapping over to the other side. So we're here, tap back and through. Tap back and through. Consciously feeling as we get to the top of the movement, you're trying to stay nice and tall, nice and upright, and you feel that squeeze through your butt. The next thing we see tons of is a crossover gait. So as you're running along, we see left foot crossing over right, right foot crossing over left. The foot's crossing the midline, and that in itself can be a bit of a problem. If you're running the mileage you want to run, and you've not got any aches and pains, particularly nothing from a lower leg or knee perspective, then perhaps don't worry about it. But if you know you've got a little bit of a crossover gate going on, and you have a tendency to pick up either a little bit of plantar fasciitis, maybe shin splints, tibialis posterior issues, or even, as I mentioned earlier, ITB syndrome, that is something you're going to want to work on because these are all exercises, although they're all injuries that are somewhat exacerbated when we start driving the foot harder into pronation, which is what happens when we land further across the midline. When we land further across the midline, we land on the outside of the foot further, and the force that drives you into your kind of final pronated position, depending on your foot, whatever that looks like, is greater and comes at a faster velocity. You, you drive faster and harder through pronation. Now, that's something that consciously you can't really change. I guess you can change consciously, but you can't sustainably change just by think, thinking, run with my feet further apart, and chances are you'll overcook it. So you end up trying to run with your feet further apart. People talk about running one foot either side of a white line. And you end up potentially giving yourself like gluteal tendinopathy type problems, problems higher up the chain where you're trying to focus on fixing something lower down. It's a classic example of a running technique trait, which is fixed in the gym rather than thinking about how to run while you're running. So whether you've got the band around your ankles, which is harder, 
or below the knee, easier, above the knee, even easier, we can work through a crab walk exercise. This starts strengthening up this lateral plane of motion. Okay, so again, muscles like our glutes in particular really start working hard when we're doing a crab walk exercise. And they're the muscles that we need to be better at stopping us from swinging the leg across the midline as we're running. So thinking about the crab walk, what we need to do is try and make sure the movement is really isolated in coming from the hips. I don't want to see that you're shifting right to left, left to right, like this, and compensating, because you're not gonna get much out of the exercise. If you're very specific about the movement, you will feel after 20, 30 seconds of moving left, right, right, left, those glutes are gonna be singing. So in the setup, you know, a slight soft knee bend, almost like you're setting up to play a golf shot. If you've not played golf, doesn't matter. You know what it looks like. You're kind of here, and then imagine you're holding a tray of drinks. If you're holding this tray of drinks, and honestly, my wife just takes the mech constantly when I'm carrying trays of drinks, like carrying tea back to the table or something like that. I kind of find myself doing this because I don't know, so ingrained. But anyway, I want you to not spill the drinks. That's kind of the point. As you're moving left or right, keeping your torso still, your legs and your hips will be doing the work and building a lot of strength in this side to side plane. That'll help provide, prevent that crossover. And the next thing we see a whole load of as people are running is a tendency to tilt forwards through the pelvis, fall into this anteriorly tilted position. Now the problem with this anteriorly tilted position where you're running around with your pelvis rocked forwards, your butt sticking out somewhat, maybe a bit of a forward lean as well, is it makes it really hard for you to use your glutes. Now, there's a thing called lower cross syndrome where you're tight and weak through your hip flexors, you are lengthened through your hamstrings, you're tight through your lower back and weak through your abdominals. Now, the tightness aspect of that, we can work on exercises like a half kneeling hip flexor stretch, that sort of thing, couch stretch, to start working on those hip flexors. So if you know you're tight there, definitely do that. But tightness through those hip flexors is often a sign of weakness. And we've got an exercise coming up later in this video that will show you to how to work on weak hip flexors, which are often the cause of the tightness you may feel there. So stick around for that. But what I want you to focus on isn't the tightness, it's the control that needs to come from your core to actually prevent this forward rock. And the easiest exercise for that starts out on your back. From here, all I want you to do is get into this position where you're roughly 90 degrees at the hip, roughly 90 degrees at the knees, the zombie arms. And from there, we're just gonna start by doing the legs. Okay, I want you to draw the belly button in, press your lower back into the ground. When you feel contact, the low back consistently against the ground. I want to just go down, straight leg, go as low as you can go to the point where the heel's just brushing the ground, but only as far as you're able to keep your lower back on the ground. If you can keep your lower back on the ground throughout, fantastic. If you can't, and you can only get to there before your back lifts, then this, for you, is what the exercise looks like. Okay, and over time, you'll be able to get lower and lower. Now, from there, if you're good and the legs you can control, the position of your lower back and core, and we need to breathe throughout, we can then do opposite arm, opposite leg, and control the position of your lower back, moving both top and bottom in a way that would, if you're not controlling through your core, cause that lower back to lift off the ground. And it's that lift that we don't want to see. We don't want to see this going on. Your lower back stays glued to the ground because you're engaging your core, kind of only two or three out of 10, sort of effort level. You can still breathe, you can still talk, but you're creating that solid midsection. Okay, so those dead bugs, as we call them, you can do 30 seconds, moving left, right, left, right, building up to a minute, left, right, left, right, just feeling consistently that you're starting to engage through your core, you'll learn what that feels like, and then, as you start up on two feet, you can walk around, 
You can run around just feeling that little lower abdominal engagement, consciously feeling the same squeeze, and you're gonna have to do it consciously to start with, that same squeeze just to switch things on and see the difference as you're walking around and jogging around, running around, gently holding this on versus letting it go. And everything gets a little bit more lazy and you draw back into that forward tilt position. So give that a go. Then another classic we see all the time, as people are running, they land, they load, and the knee drifts in towards the midline. Now, you can't, as you're running, think about, you need to keep the knee pointing forward. You need to keep the knee pointing forward with every footfall. It ain't gonna happen. So don't even think about trying. Instead, we need to think about strengthening the right areas. So we need to strengthen and teach the body. It's not just about strengthening. We need to teach the body how to control on one leg the position of the knee, and that's repetition. So single leg squats are great. We can also add a resistance band into our single leg squats. So we'll go band just below the knee this time. And with this little single leg squat, we're not going crazy deep with this. Okay, and if you need to hold a wall, that's fine as well. It's quality of movement that I'm after. Before you even come to squat, I want you to use the other leg to pull a little bit of tension into the band, only a little. We're not out here anywhere, just a little bit of tension. From there, you're gonna come down, the knee faces forwards over the second toe the whole time, down to up. The band is wanting to pull you that way, your job is to subtly drive that way with the standing foot. Now, on that standing foot, I want you to put the weight distribution ever so slightly down through the outside couple of bones, those long bones, those metatarsal bones in the foot. So that's the foot. We're loading down the outside here without lifting the inside. Okay, so we're not up on the outside of the foot but feel the weight coming down through here because that'll help prevent the drift inwards of the foot and the knee following with it. So think about the load through the outside of that foot, and then you come back up. Over time, doing three sets of 15 of these every day for four, six, eight weeks, you'll notice you get better and better at them and that'll translate into your running. Now, while we've got the band out, I mentioned earlier an exercise for your hip flexors. A lot of people feel like they get quite tight through their hip flexors. And yes, you can hip flex a stretch till the cows come home. And a lot of people feel that they don't really get anywhere with their hip flexor stretches. And something people don't tell you enough is that tight hip flexors, can often be because of weak hip flexors. It's not an area we strengthen a lot. It's not an area, we, an area we really focus on. Yet, us runners, as we're running, there's a lot of hip flexion going on. We need to be strong at pulling into this position. That's why, let's say, you've got into a, a longer, long run than you've done for a long time. Sometimes, you kind of get a little bit of pain through here. It's a little bit of early fatigue through this kind of region. We can work on that. Let's use the band around your foot, band around your other foot. We're gonna keep the feet dorsiflexed. By that, I mean keep the toes pulled up to the shin throughout this exercise. All I want you to do, it's very, very, very simple, is from here, stand on one leg, keeping that foot dorsiflexed. You're gonna bring your knee up to hip height. We're gonna just adopt these running man arms. We're gonna count to 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Don't let the knee drop. Three, two, one. And that's the point. We don't let the knee drop. So we, we get up here and we stay in this position rather than allowing ourselves to drop over time. So we're going to do five sets of 10 on each side, five sets of 10 seconds on each side, building to 10 sets of 10 seconds on each side. And trust me, you're going to know about this. Those hip flexors are going to feel like I've done some work. I don't want you shifting left and right. Okay, so stay honest. Do it in front of a mirror if you need to. We're just, just gonna hold position. Maintain eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Your lower abdominals will feel that, your hip flexors will feel that, 
And trust me, that can be the breakthrough when you haven't been getting anywhere with your hip flexor stretches that can really start conditioning those hip flexors to improve your running. Give these a go. Let me know how you get on. And here's a video that I think you will find really helpful in improving your running form for those long runs.